Hello, fellow crafters. Lori here from the Crafty Connection. And first and foremost, I'm going to say hello and I hope you're having a great day. Um, we are on to part four of this uh, fairy house, tree house build. And I hope you're enjoying the series so far. I love to build and I have a hard time not just keep going because I have to stop and film it. So it's my first time fil filming um, one of these builds. So bear with me. Anyway, so I started to uh, film where I added the lights in there, and for some reason it didn't uh, record. I'm not sure what I did. So I'm just going to show you what I did briefly, and I'm going to try to position this camera so it gets a better angle instead of sideways on the videos, but it may end up sideways on the videos. But it's easy enough to see what I'm doing either way. So I am going to go ahead and uh, turn the camera and show you where I'm at, and then we will proceed. All right, so here is our fairy house. We left the last video by finishing the floor. We added the joint compound for the grout. Um, so we have a really nice floor. It feels like stone, it's hard like stone, but it's cardboard cup holders. All right, so moving on. We made the two floor pieces, um, I believe in part one of the video, and they're not connected in here yet. They are just the pieces we fit, and I, sorry, that is one of my cats in here. And she's not supposed to be in here. So what I had to do is I added on, once I put it in here, I had to add a little bit of cardboard here on the end with the tape. And that's just to fill, give the fill in for my um, floor. And that piece goes up here and this piece goes down here. So how I added the lights was, because I filmed it, but it didn't record. So I have the um, some fairy lights with a with a battery pack here, and hold on one second because my dogs are going nutty. All right, so continuing on. So what I did is, like I said, I added that on there, and we, it's uh, just to kind of fill in, which will get filled in more as we put it in. So I started with the battery pack here, and it's going to go on the tree. Let me see if I can move this phone. It's going to go down here on the tree, right in here, and I will build a little pocket for it, and it may end up being right here or here, but that'll be further down. And then the bottom floor, I took the lights and I don't know, you can't really see them, but they're underneath the tape here. And I just laid them across in like a horseshoe shape there. And I put tape over them. And I'm going to turn them on so you can see. There, you can kind of see the shape of them there. Nothing perfect whatsoever. And then those will sit right in here. too far down. There we go. Like right in here. And then I measured how far it was between the top and the bottom floor. So this one goes in right here. And you can see the lights are right here. So these will be taped in here. I will paint these black so you won't see them. And then I'll build up bark around them. And for some reason, my top lights are not working. Lovely. At all. Don't know why there. So I will have to figure that out or add some more something. We'll figure it out as we go. So the next step to do... I wonder why those top ones aren't working. That's a little aggravating. 
All right, well, we'll figure that out as we go. We may end up cutting these off down here and just restringing for up here, but we'll do that as we get to it. So the next step now is to move the house, first of all, because we're gonna work on the floor bases. So give me one second. probably hear my dogs out in the other room going crazy. All right, so first what I'm going to do is figure this out, which was not part of my plan, but things happen. So I'm going to turn those back on. All right, so I don't know if I cut this, if they'll stay working or not. To be honest, I know some do, some don't. Oh, here's the issue right here, this little wire broke. So I guess that tells me that that's not... Okay, so that wire broke right there. Alright, so I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to cut it off and see if it stops working. Nope, those still work. Alright, so right now we just have the lights for the bottom floor. See if I can get this adjusted a bit more. Maybe. Sorry about that. My phone fell off. So I'm just going to try to keep this in frame so you can see what I'm doing here. So we know this one works. So we'll keep that there. This one doesn't work. So we'll just have to add some more lights to this. So I'm just going to cut that piece off. I'm not going to take any of this out. because That would make no sense. So what I need to do is get a, another string of lights to add to this one. So let me grab those. I'll be right back. Alright, sorry about that guys. I had to go find some more lights. I had to put the batteries in it. I wasn't going to sit there and do it on camera because it took me forever so I found some more lights and they do work so they're on I'm going to turn those off for now and these were just some um, I don't know if these were Dollar Tree or Walmart I go to Walmart after Christmas and they'll have these on sale usually so I just grab a ton of them so I'll have them for these builds or Dollar Tree Sometimes the craft stores have them on sale after the holidays. I just, you got to look around. So now I'm just going to unwind it, which I should have done before I pushed record. But that's okay. It is what it is. But I'm kind of glad this happened because I got, it gets gives me a chance to show you how sometimes things happen. Like with the lights not working on half of it and how it's easy to just fix them had the whole strand not worked once I cut it I would have just cut it all down and started with a fresh one I would not have taken them off because there's really no reason to um, so you can just see it's easy enough to, to fix on these projects all right this is wound up kind of crazy here I'm going to pause it and unwind this because it's all tangled up. All right, so I got it untwisted. So all this means is we'll just have to add two, build two little pocket pouches for these. No big deal. So this was the other one. I'm going to turn it back on so I can just see where the lights are stopping and starting. And I'm going to... Um, start with this end first because I do want to put some lights up on the 
third floor, if this is long enough, which it might be, yeah. So I'm just going to put a few down here, and I'm going to start with the end that's not connected to the battery pack. And all I'm going to do is just put some tape down over them. And like, like I said, kind of in a horseshoe shape does not have to be any perfect pattern. You're not even going to see these unless you stick your head in. And they will be all covered and painted also. So this kind of gives me a chance to show you again how I, how I did it. Since the first time it didn't record. So, so I'm just covering it up with the tape. I'll just take the tape. And I want to cover all of the light pieces and the wiring. Because I am going to be putting glued paper towel over this and then paint. So I'm just kind of pushing around the lights. Scratchy's the one of my cats that is allowed in here because he doesn't mess with stuff normally. He just sits in the window or in his little bed I have in here. And he's a good boy. So, Alright, so I have those in. And you can see I still have the battery pack that I can run up and put a few lights. Maybe in the, the roof and I maybe, maybe not. But we'll see. So we have that done. So we're going to turn those off. And then what I'm going to do now is I have to cover the tape and lights with the paper towel and glue mixture. So I'm going to grab that right here. Everything is covered with the tape. I already have my paper towel and my glue mixture. And all the glue mixture is is the white school glue, Elmer's glue. I use an Amazon glue which is almost out so you're gonna see how I make more but it also shows you in depth in the first and second part of this video so let me go grab the glue and some water and I'll be right back all right so I just have my little bucket that or little plastic container with a lid I use for my glue and I've reused this container forever this is the glue I'm using it's just a uh, Amazon basic. It's just white school glue. And you don't have to get a jug this big. I do a lot of builds. And I'm just going to pour some in here. For this project so far, I would say of this jug, I maybe used a quarter of it for the whole tree build. I've had it forever and this keeps on chugging along. You want to add a little water and no you don't have to use bottled water in fact this isn't even bottled water I just put some water in an empty bottle from the sink it's just easier to have it in here and I'm just gonna stir that up and which I stated before you just kind of want it enough water in there to give it kind of a, a runny lotion or get like a cheap lotion consistency that's about you don't want it too watery or too thick so I just like to say a cheap lotion consistency is what I call it And then I will do some of this on camera for you. You've seen me do this before many times. So I just take my piece and I dip it in my glue. Fold it in half. Pull off a lot of that glue. Plus this gives it a nice coating. 
Now on this one, I'm only going to be able to do one side at a time while it dries. So I'm going to go ahead and get the one side on both done. And I'll just start anywhere in the middle here. It doesn't matter where you start. You can start on the edges. You can start on the middle. And for this one, I want to kind of smooth it out the best I can. It's not going to be perfectly smooth, but nowhere on a tree is it perfectly smooth. So we will just smooth that out. We don't need to make the bark effect on this because we want to paint it. And we're also going to put flooring on the on these when they're dry. So I was going to put, uh, I, we did stone on the bottom floor. And I was going to put wood floors on the second and the third. But I think for this video, since we are showing, I'm showing you different ways and different techniques, that I will probably incorporate a tile floor on one, which is also made out of the cup holders or egg trays, whatever you want to use, and a wood floor. So I'll do a tile floor and I'll do a wood floor, which is two different ways to do it. Two different looks totally, and they're both really easy to do. So I'm just going to put a couple more of these on, on camera, because we've all seen me do it in part one and part two. Now, you don't have to on these, because you're not going to see these. Um, paper towels because they're going to be covered with paint for the ceiling of the other floor and flooring or yeah flooring pieces so I you can go any which way you want to go on these so I'm putting this one long ways just so it covers more and getting the air bubbles out let me get one more piece in here And then what I do, when I get like to this end where the wire is coming out, I'm going to overlap it a little bit so I can take it around and just smooth it out. And then I'll just pull that wire. And then when I wrap this around, which I'm going to do right now, and show you exactly what I mean. So what I do is I smooth it. And then I'm just going to wrap that paper towel underneath like that and then when I get up here I will take and rip the paper towel a bit <coughs> excuse me so I can get it <coughs> around that wire there as best I can there we go so anyway you got a little bit that's going to stick on the paper here I did put wax paper down I don't think I mentioned that that's going to keep it wax or parchment paper that'll keep it from sticking down there <coughs> excuse me so I'm going to go ahead and finish this one up on this side and the other one. And when that's all finished and dry, I'll do the other side. And then I'll be back to show you how we're going to do the two different uh, floors. All right. So now we're going to move on to the floors. And for the floors, we're going to do one floor with wood, like hardwood floors. And the other one, we're going to do tiles. And the reason I'm doing those is to show you different options. We've already done the stone floor. So the next one I'm going to do is going to be the wood floor. And I want to make sure as I'm doing this that I have the bottom floor and not the top. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter because we they're not connected. I forgot. 
Okay, so the um, options, different options you have or it's, that I use when I'm doing the wood floors is you can always do these in cardboard. <coughs> Excuse me. But I don't like to use the cardboard myself. But it's possible you could just cut them in the length that you wanted. Um, another way to do them is using these wooden coffee stir sticks. These are small. It would take quite a few to do the floor. But it would look really nice. But I'm not going to use those. And these I get on Amazon. And just get a big box of a thousand of them. And they're relatively inexpensive. And then there's popsicle sticks. You can use the regular size ones. It would look nice. These are the medium size ones. They also have jumbo ones, which I think would be a little bit too big. Um, both of the medium and the jumbo, I got these at, I believe, Walmart. But any craft supply store should have them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start and I'm going to cut off the end of one. And I'm just going slow with basic pair of junk scissors. And I go slow to keep them from cracking. And then what I'm going to do is I'll start. Let me find the edge that you can see. Right here on the edge. I've got to cut the other end off too, I guess. So I just take this and I cut it nice and slow. And they do, the ends do fly everywhere. And then if needed, just grab a piece of sandpaper. You know, and just run it across there. I get a big pack of this at Dollar Tree for $1.25. And you just need a little piece just to kind of soften your edges. And then I'll start at just what you can actually start anywhere you want. So I'm going to go ahead and start right here in the middle. So I have a long strip here. And then you can cut these down or leave them long or have some long and some short. I'm thinking if I want to cut this down, but I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it at this length to start. And I'm using hot glue to put these down so they actually stick because they'll have uh, some stain. They'll have a layer of Mod Podge. And I'm just putting a very small little layer of glue down. I'm just eyeballing it to make sure I have it straight. So you want to take it <clears throat> out to where it's pretty much flush here with the edge. But don't worry about if it's not perfect because we will be putting something along the wall and the floor for like a baseboard or the border. And then I'm just going to go ahead and nice and slowly cut the uh, another one. And do the same thing. I'm just going to go ahead and add a small strip of the, the hot glue. Sorry you can't see the gluing process. My glue gun cord is a little bit too short. Now you could use white glue, wood glue. You could use any glue you choose for this. I choose to use this, the hot glue strip for putting the floor down. And like I said, it'll have stain, Mod Podge. So once these are down and everything's on them, they're not going anywhere. All right, so the next piece. I'm going to cut. Now you can see here that I have a little bit of a crack. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not. But that's okay because everything will fill it in. You could always turn it over to make sure that you have, um, if the other side is better. This one I cut a little bit off. So I'm going to line it first to see. And yeah, it'll be fine. 
so I'm going to push that up to here. And of course I don't have a pen or anything over here, imagine that. So I'm just going to leave it and I'll cut it once I get it put on. I'm going to get my glue. Push it right up against that end piece. Which, let me see if I can get this a little better so you can see everything. I really need to get a different camera holder. Because this one is not very good. I need to get one that'll go up and look straight down. That way you can see exactly what I'm doing. <clears throat> and maybe I'll have one soon. Okay, I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to cut the end off of another one. Nice and slow. Go ahead and just get those rough edges off of here. Now you could go ahead and cut a lot of these down to be, before you start, which is what I usually do. But this time I'm doing it on camera so you can see. This time I'm going to put this one up against these. So here's my seam right here. So I'm going to line this one up so it's kind of staggering there. And there is a little bit of a gap right here and that's perfectly fine. And you'll, you'll see why as we get it done, that's why we painted the black underneath. Get some glue. And just butt that up against that one as best you can. All right, let me grab something to make a mark with. And then you want to get another, your next popsicle stick or coffee stick, whatever you're using. And this time I'm going to push it up here to this end. And I'm going to mark it this time where I need to cut it. I just made a little line, a reference. And I'm just cutting that nice and slow. And then that will give me this will give me like extra pieces when I need to do fill-ins. And I'm gonna put that back up here. Alright, and that fits. I always kind of try to do a a dry fit before I glue it down just to be sure. There we go. Okay. And then the next piece. And this one is going to fit all the way across so I can cut both ends on this one. And this one will go here. Again, there's going to be a little bit of a gap and that's perfectly fine. I mean, if you have just a, a hair piece of a gap, that's fine. You don't want to have like a half a centimeter or a whole centimeter. That would not look quite right. But this little bit of a gap is fine. And then again, we have that little piece. So we're going to fit that down here at the end. And take our pen. 
and just our pencil, whatever you're using, and make a little mark. And again, cut that nice and slow. And a tip, when you're cutting these, if you're cutting small pieces like this one, if you hold on to the shorter piece as you're cutting, that'll help also keep it from cracking on you. And I didn't cut that very straight at all. <clears throat> and that's perfectly fine also. These absolutely do not have to be perfect. And there we go. And you see, I don't know if you can see that. it's They're loose. And that's fine. We just want a basic hold. And then we're going to start again. We'll do one more row here on camera. And I'll do the rest off camera to save video time. So this time the separator piece is right here. And so this one will fit just fine right there. You just don't want them all going in the exact same line. You want that separation of the um, pieces, which I'll kind of... So hopefully you can see what I mean. Like there's a piece separation here, here, here. There's going to be one about here, once I get the ends cut off. They don't have to be a perfect sand, you just want to get any splinters off pretty much. Okay, so this one will go here. Just going to do a little dry fitting. Yes, and that works. Get a little glue. And mind you, I'm not using, like I said, much glue. I'm doing pretty much one strip right down the middle. Because we don't want it to, to squirt out on the sides. Because when we go to stain it, if there's hot glue sticking out anywhere, the stain won't stick to it. But if you do get some coming out somewhere, you can easily just get a piece of tweezers and pull it off. Or your fingernail. Whatever works. Okay, I'm going to use another little piece, but I got to cut it. Decide this is the one I cut crooked. And that is not quite long enough, so I'm going to save that and then cut a new one. It was almost long enough, but once I cut the end off, it would not have fit. Okay, got that lined up, put a little line and cut. another little piece. I save all of the pieces. I don't save the teeny tiny pieces, but I do save those size. Because when you're doing miniature, you can absolutely use them. Okay, so we'll fit this one in. Perfect. All right, we'll just slide that one in into place. So there we go. You can see what I'm doing here. This one I got to cut off still, but 
um, we have those down. Now, when you're doing these floors, you could have done them this way if you wanted to. I think they look better going long way because this is the back of the floor that'll hit the wall. And these are the two sides here. So I did mine this way. You can do yours any way you choose. You could do designs into this if you wanted to. Um, you could make squares, whatever. It's your floor. You can design it any way you want. I'm just showing you how I do a basic wood floor. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these off camera. I will come back when I come up here just to show you how I fit it in on the angle here. So I will see you in a few minutes. All right, popping back in to show you how I do these corners here. So what I did is I took a stick, a regular stick, cut off one end. And I'm going to try to move this part so you can see this edge. So we are here. And I'm going to this end because this one already has a long piece over here. Whereas this one has two short ones with the seam here. So I'm going to put this up like this, line it up, leaving some overhang. Then I'm going to lift that up while I hold that into place. And then I'm going to flip it over take my pen or whatever you're using and just trace that onto the stick and then cut the stick where that line is that I just drew doesn't have to be perfect you just want to go slow so you can get it to not completely crack and split on you. Okay, mine did a little bit. Let's see what we got here. But I think it'll be fine. Anyway, I'm just going to stick it on here. Maybe move it down a hair bit. And if it does split too much like that, just move it down and then glue it in. And you can always trim up the ends that are hanging, if anything's hanging over. So let me get some glue. And then I'm going to pull it down enough to where that frail side isn't showing. And then I'm just going to hold it down. And then if I need to, which I do on this one, I'm going to turn it over so I can try to keep it in frame for you. Yes. And then I'm just going to push it down so it doesn't go anywhere and just use my utility knife here to cut that piece off. Take five or six swipes of it and then that should snap right off which it did and you can just take some sandpaper if needed and just smooth that edge up a little bit and there we go and that's how I do these corners so here I'm going to go up, butt it up here, hold it, flip it over, draw that line there so I know where to cut it, cut it nice and slow so I don't get those splits, I try not to get them anyway. corner there so I don't stab myself with it. But that up there, almost a perfect fit. We can cut some more down on this before we glue it or cut it off with the utility knife. I'm just going to try to trim it up here with the scissors to get a good fit. 
There we go, almost perfect. And then we're just gonna glue it in. Buttered up to that last one there. Down. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing, or keep it going up here, and then I'll come back and we will get this floor stained. All right, now it is time to stain. So, so you see some of these are loose a little bit, and that's fine, because once these are stained, then we'll put a layer of Mod Podge over them and they'll all be down nice and secure. If you see, like right down here, there's a little black of the bottom floor showing, a little bit right there, all that's fine, because there will be something around here for a baseboard-like substance. And let me just, sorry, I just noticed that I don't like the way this is hanging over. So let me just cut this off without cutting my wire for my lights. Cutting them lengthwise is a little bit easier than going acrosswise usually they just snap right off for the most part Just run a little sandpaper there so I don't end up with some splinters. There we go. And just make sure the lights still work and I didn't slice them. And they do. So we're good there. Alright. So what I do, you can use stain. I'm inside and I have my window open but it's still not very uh, ventilated just just the window open so I'm gonna make a stain using some acrylic paint and some water you can use any color stain you want if you wanted to do like a blue or a gray uh, washed floor then you would use that color um, paint I want a, like a wood stain floor so I'm gonna use a brown and I had an espresso here and I thought about using burnt umber, but they're a little dark. So I'm going to use this brown from the Dollar Tree. It says it's premium acrylic paint. I'm pretty sure it's watered already, but we're going to try it out. And then just add some water to it to thin it down. Not a ton. And I'm just going to use this little piece of stick that we cut off for the. It's not working the best. So let me just get the brush. Using again just one of these sponge daubers that you can get a pack of quite a few from the Dollar Tree. sample it on a piece of scrap yeah, that still need a little bit more water and you just do it until you get it to the consistency and look that you like or you could just use regular wood stain but because I don't really want to have my whole craft room smelling like stain going to use the watered down version of the acrylic paint. Almost to where I want it. Going to add just a hair bit more water. And like I said, you just do it until you get the consistency 
or a stain like color that you like. And you could just paint these if you wanted to. It's your project. You do it any way you want. Alright, I'm going to go with what I have here. And I'm just going to start anywhere. Making sure I get those metals. Or the edge, the edges. And it does not take much to do these at all. I can get those little areas where they pieces join together. And if it ends up the color you use gets a little darker than you wanted it, you can always wipe it on and then take a baby wipe and wipe some off. I'm actually liking this color that it, this came out. Kind of looks in person like a, almost like a chestnut stain. Got little tints of like redwood in it, but still with the brown tone that I was looking for. Now I'm just going and making sure I get into those creases with my stain. And I'm just going to go over the whole thing again, just the brush to make sure I have everything nicely evened out. Okay. Now I want to hold it up and look to make sure I have all my little pieces. All right, I'm going to put this under the fan and let it dry and then we'll see if we need a second coat for that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on my little stain and I can save it for another project. Just an FYI, I save these little, um, they're beneficial. Ooh, I just spilled paint. Well, that wasn't a very airtight container. Anyway, sorry. I save these um, containers from the dog food. Just lesson learned, don't put them upside down or sideways grab a couple wipes to get my huge mess up. here and put this under the fan and then we will work on our tile piece. Alright. Let's move this out of the way so I don't have another disaster of a mess. again I've already painted black underneath and I just used the apple barrel black paint for this one too so what I'm using for the tiles is egg trays and I cut this part I cut the top of it so I'm using this part here and I cut 
from like some of these sides here and this, these pieces and I'll save this one for a different project and I just cut them into little squares and I didn't measure these so to speak I cut one they're not perfect and then I just use them to get an idea on the rest of them and they are about an inch it's all the way around you know like a one inch square and then with these we're gonna just do the same thing as we did with the wood we're just gonna lay these down so I'm gonna start in the middle and I'm hot gluing these as well and I'm making sure when I do these that there I'm putting the the more texture side oops hang on I need a glue stick then I'm putting the more texture side facing up yeah. and I will show you exactly what I mean now on these if you notice I am leaving a small little gap between these okay, and when I say the textured side I don't know if you're going to be able to see it but this side has a more of a texture whereas this side doesn't and I'm using the rougher side to face up for my tiles and you can do tiles out of any um, anything really you can use the egg trays you can use um, the carry out cup holders that kind of have the same thing um, pea pots what else? You can use regular cardboard if you want a smooth tile. There's just so many different things you can use. Corrugated cardboard would make a nice thick um, tile. You could take paper plates even and cut those up or styrofoam pieces. Just pretty much whatever you want to make your, your tiles out of. Woodwork. And again, you want to make sure that you get those, try to get those glue pieces up. And again, these do not have to be perfect. But you got to remember, these are fairies building these. These are not architects and skilled construction workers. And... I am neither of those, so it just is what it is. And you notice these are not perfect um, squares at all. Some are a little smaller than the next, and then when we get to the ends, we'll be cutting. So then let me finish this row up, and then we'll do another row so I can show you how I do them, you can do them any way you want. You don't have to leave gaps between your tiles if you don't want them. I do it because I like the look of like a grout in between. And I may lighten that up as I go, but I like to start with the black on the bottom because it gives it a good uh, base, base color. So I'm just going to keep putting these right there more in here and then I can show you how I do mine and 
I did a kitchen floor in another house I did. It was a house for some frogs. And I call it the frog house. Which if I can locate it, it's probably in the basement somewhere because that's where I put a lot of my builds until I'm ready to do something with them, give them away, sell them, whatever. But if I can locate it, I will show it to you. And you can see what I mean. I did a black and white tiled floor in that kitchen for that house. And all I did on that one was the same thing I'm doing here, but I just used some chipboard cereal box when I did those because they were smooth and I just painted them before I stuck them down and then put them in as in the uh, checkerboard pattern which I thought looked pretty cool so at this point now we got one line you can do different things you can line your tiles up to be the same or you can stagger like so. I'm going to stagger my tiles because I just like the way it looks for this particular project. But, you know, play around with it and see what you like because it's your project. So, again, leaving that gap there between these two also. But let me just give you an idea if by setting these down. So, if I'm going to stagger these, which I am, I would just put them so this is what it would look like going across. Some of them may end up being close to the same, like so. And that's my preference for this particular project. And if you wanted them to be the same or close to it, you could just do them like that. Either way would look good. I'm just looking for more of a I don't know, I guess a, a rustic, not even so much a rustic, more of a, I don't know, I don't even know the word for it, but that's, this is the look I'm going for. So we will just call it that, the look I'm going for. Staggered tiles. So I just want to mention something else too that I just thought about. So if you're doing Floors. Let's say you wanted to make a really worn out floor and um, whatever. What you could do is then take something like, say, the tip of your utility knife. And I'm not going to do it on a tile I'm using. but And say this is a piece of tile here that you wanted to use. You could always take this and press down into that or even cut a little bit into it to make it look like a crack in the tile. And then when you're painting it, you would just emphasize, put a little black paint underneath it or dark brown, and that would look like a, like a crack in the tile. Or with the wood, for example, if you wanted to make it look like an old beat up floor, then you would take something like the pokey tool and you would just kind of beat up on it, so to speak. Put some scratches in it, um, going whichever way you want. Let me just put a few, and you can, and I'll put a little stain on it just to show you what I mean. So you would just kind of beat up on it. didn't do a great job of that beating up but you can kind of see like right there where it's got a little chippy up part and then or take a hammer even and and hammer some into it just beat it up and then stain it and then your stain is going to get darker in the areas that you beat up which will make your floor look more old and um, used that's what we'll call it, old and used. So I'm going to keep putting my tile 
pieces down. So I'm going to draw them, leaving those gaps there in between. These make really good bricks too. And stones and everything else, but you'll get to see more of that as we go along. I'm going to make a stone fireplace for this floor, I believe, or maybe on the wood floor. I don't know. We'll see as we go. I'm so indecisive when it comes to building stuff. I kind of make my decisions as I go. Um, I have an idea in my mind, and then I just add as I go. So I'm going to continue putting all these on, doing the same thing up here as I did on the other one, just cutting them to fit, same with the edges, and then I'll come back and we'll move on to the next step.
Sorry about that. My phone fell off. So I'm just going to try to keep this in frame so you can see what I'm doing here. So we know this one works, so we'll keep that there. This one doesn't work, so we'll just have to add some more lights to this. So I'm just going to cut that piece off. I'm not going to take any of this out. That would make no sense. So what I need to do is get a, another string of lights to add to this one. So let me grab those. I'll be right back. Alright, sorry about that guys, I had to go find some more lights, I had to put the batteries in it, I wasn't going to sit there and do it on camera because it took me forever. So I found some more lights and they do work, so they're on. I'm going to turn those off for now. And these were just some, um, I don't know if these were Dollar Tree or Walmart. I go to Walmart after Christmas and they'll have these on sale usually, so I just grab a ton of them so I'll have them for these builds or Dollar Tree sometimes the craft stores have them on sale after the holidays I just you got to look around so now I'm just gonna unwind it which I should have done before I pushed record but it's okay it is what it is but I'm kind of glad this happened because I got it gets gives me a chance to show you how sometimes things happen like with the lights not working on half of it and how it's easy to just fix them had the whole strand not worked once I cut it I would have just cut it all down and started with a fresh one I would not have taken them off because there's really no reason to um, so you can just see it's easy enough to, to fix on these projects all right, this is wound up kind of crazy here. Okay, I'm going to pause it and unwind this because it's all tangled. All right, so I got it untwisted. So all this means is we'll just have to add two, build two little pocket pouches for these. No big deal. So this was the other one. I'm going to turn it back on so I can just see where the lights are stopping and starting. And I'm going to um, start with this end first because I do want to put some lights up on the third floor if this is long enough which it might be yeah so I'm just gonna put a few down here and I'm gonna start with the end that's not connected to the battery pack and all I'm gonna do is just put some tape down over them and like like I said kind of in a horseshoe shape does not have to be any perfect pattern. You're not even going to see these unless you stick your head in. And they will be all covered and painted also. So this kind of gives me a chance to show you again how I, how I did it. Since the first time it didn't record. So, so I'm just covering it up with the tape. So I'll just take the tape. I want to cover all of the light pieces and the wiring because I am going to be putting glued paper towel over this and then paint. So I'm just kind of pushing around the lights. Scratchy's the one of my cats that is allowed in here because he doesn't mess with stuff normally. He just sits in the window or in his little bed I have in here. And he's a good boy. So, Alright, so I have those in. And you can see I still have the battery pack that I can run up and put a few lights maybe in the, the roof. And I maybe, maybe not. 
but we'll see. So we have that done. So we're going to turn those off, and then what I'm going to do now is I have to cover the tape and lights with the paper towel and glue mixture. So I'm going to grab that right here. Everything is covered with the tape. I already have my paper towel and my glue mixture. And all the glue mixture is, is the white school glue, Elmer's glue. I use an Amazon glue, which is almost out. So you're going to see how I make more. But it also shows you in depth in the first and second part of this video. So let me go grab the glue and some water and I'll be right back. Alright, so I just have my little bucket that, or little plastic container with a lid I use for my glue. And I've reused this container forever. This is the glue I'm using. It's just uh, Amazon Basic. It's just white school glue. And you don't have to get a jug this big. I do a lot of builds. And I'm just going to pour some in here. For this project so far, I would say of this jug, I maybe used a quarter of it for the whole tree build. Because I've had it forever and this keeps on chugging along. You want to add a little water. And no, you don't have to use bottled water. In fact, this isn't even bottled water. I just put some water in an empty bottle from the sink. It's just easier to have it in here. And I'm just going to stir that up. And Which I stated before, you just kind of want it enough water in there to give it kind of a, a runny lotion or get like a cheap lotion consistency. That's about, you don't want it too watery or too thick. So I just like to say a cheap lotion consistency is what I call it. And then I will do some of this on camera for you. You've seen me do this before many times. So I just take my piece and I dip it in my glue. Fold it in half. Pull off a lot of that glue. Plus this gives it a nice coating. Now on this one, I'm only going to be able to do one side at a time while it dries. So I'm going to go ahead and get the one side on both done. And I'll just start anywhere in the middle here. It doesn't matter where you start. You start on the edges. You can start on the middle. And for this one, I want to kind of smooth it out the best I can. It's not going to be perfectly smooth, but nowhere on a tree is it perfectly smooth. So we will just smooth that out. We don't need to make the bark effect on this because we want to paint it. And we're also going to put flooring on the on these when they're dry. So I was going to put, uh, I, we did stone on the bottom floor. And I was going to put wood floors on the second and the third. But I think for this video, since we are showing, I'm showing you different ways and different techniques, that I will probably incorporate a tile floor on one, which is also made out of the cup holders or egg trays, whatever you want to use, and a wood floor. So I'll do a tile floor and I'll do a wood floor, which is two different ways to do it. Two different looks totally, and they're both really easy to do. So I'm just going to put a couple more of these on, on camera, because we've all seen me do it in part one and part two. Now, you don't have to on these, because you're not going to see these. Um, paper towels because they're going to be covered with paint for the 
ceiling of the other floor and flooring or yeah flooring pieces so I you can go any which way you want to go on these so I'm putting this one long ways just so it covers more and getting the air bubbles out let me get one more piece in here And then what I do, when I get like to this end where the wire is coming out, I'm going to overlap it a little bit so I can take it around and just smooth it out. And then I'll just pull that wire. And then when I wrap this around, which I'm going to do right now, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So what I do is I smooth it. And then I'm just going to wrap that paper towel underneath like that and then when I get up here I will take and rip the paper towel a bit <coughs> excuse me so I can get it <coughs> <coughs> around that wire there as best I can there you go so anyway you got a little bit that's gonna stick on the paper here I did put wax paper down I don't think I mentioned that that's gonna keep it wax or parchment paper that'll keep it from sticking down there <coughs> excuse me so I'm going to go ahead and finish this one up on this side and the other one. And when that's all finished and dry, I'll do the other side. And then I'll be back to show you how we're going to do the two different uh, floors. All right. So now we're going to move on to the floors. And for the floors, we're going to do one floor with wood, like hardwood floors. And the other one, we're going to do tiles. And the reason I'm doing those is to show you different options. We've already done the stone floor. So the next one I'm going to do is going to be the wood floor. And I want to make sure as I'm doing this that I have the bottom floor and not the top. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter because we they're not connected. I forgot. Okay, so the um, options, different options you have or it's, that I use when I'm doing the wood floors is you can always do these in cardboard. <coughs> Excuse me. But I don't like to use the cardboard myself, but it's possible you could just cut them in the length that you wanted. Um, another way to do them is using these wooden coffee stir sticks. These are small. It would take quite a few to do the floor, but it would look really nice, but I'm not going to use those. And these I get on Amazon and just get a big box of a thousand of them and they're relatively inexpensive. And then there's popsicle sticks. You can use the regular size ones it would look nice. These are the medium size ones. They also have jumbo ones, which I think would be a little bit too big. Um, both of the medium and the jumbo, I got these at, I believe, Walmart, but any craft supply store should have them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, and I'm going to cut off the end of one. And I'm just going slow with basic pair of junk scissors. And I go slow to keep them from cracking. And then what I'm going to do is I'll start, let me find the edge that you can see. Right here on the edge, I've got to cut the other end off too, I guess. So I just take this and I cut it nice and slow. And they do, the ends do fly everywhere. And then if needed, just grab a piece of sandpaper. You know, and just 
run it across there. I get a big pack of this at Dollar Tree for $1.25. And you just need a little piece just to kind of soften your edges. And then I'll start at just what you can actually start anywhere you want. So I'm going to go ahead and start right here in the middle. So I have a long strip here. And then you can cut these down or leave them long or have some long and some short. I'm thinking if I want to cut this down, but I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it at this length to start. And I'm using hot glue to put these down so they actually stick because they'll have uh, some stain. They'll have a layer of Mod Podge. And I'm just putting a very small little layer of glue down. I'm just eyeballing it to make sure I have it straight. So you want to take it <clears throat> out to where it's pretty much flush here with the edge. But don't worry about if it's not perfect because we will be putting something along the wall and the floor for like a baseboard or the border. And then I'm just going to go ahead and nice and slowly cut the uh, another one. And do the same thing. I'm just going to go ahead and add a small strip of the, the hot glue. Sorry you can't see the gluing process. My glue gun cord is a little bit too short. Now you could use white glue, wood glue. You could use any glue you choose for this. I choose to use this the hot glue strip for putting the floor down. And like I said, it'll have stain, Mod Podge. So once these are down and everything's on them, they're not going anywhere. All right, so the next piece. I'm going to cut. Now you can see here that I have a little bit of a crack. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not. But that's okay because everything will fill it in. You could always turn it over to make sure that you have, um, if the, the other side is better. This one I cut a little bit off. So I'm going to line it first to see. And yeah, it'll be fine. So I'm going to push that up to here. And of course I don't have a pen or anything over here. Imagine that. So I'm just going to leave it and I'll cut it once I get it put on. I'm going to get my glue. Push it right up against that end piece. Which, let me see if I can get this a little better so you can see everything. I really need to get a different camera holder because this one is not very good. I need to get one that'll go up and look straight down. That way you can see exactly what I'm doing <clears throat> and maybe I'll have one soon. Okay, I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to cut the end off of another one. Nice and slow. edges off of here. Now you could go ahead and cut a lot of these down to be, before you start, which is what I usually do. But this time I'm doing it on camera so you can see. This time I'm going to put this one up against these. So here's my seam right here. So I'm going to line this one up so it's kind of staggering there. And there is a little bit of a gap right here and that's perfectly fine and you'll 
you'll see why as we get it done. That's why we painted the black underneath. Get some glue. And just butt that up against that one as best you can. All right, let me grab something to make them work with. Okay. And then you want to get another, your next popsicle stick or coffee stick, whatever you're using. And this time I'm going to push it up here to this end and I'm going to mark it this time where I need to cut it. I just made a little line, a reference. And I'm just cutting that nice and slow. And then that will give me This will give me like extra pieces when I need to do fill-ins. And I'm going to put that back up here. Alright, and that fits. I always kind of try to do a, a dry fit before I glue it down just to be sure. There we go. Okay. And then the next piece... This one is going to fit all the way across, so I can cut both ends on this one. And this one will go here. Again, there's going to be a little bit of a gap, and that's perfectly fine. I mean, if you have just a, a hair piece of a gap, that's fine. You don't want to have like a, a half a centimeter or a whole centimeter. That would not look quite right. But this little bit of a gap is fine. And then again, we have that little piece. So we're going to fit that down here at the end. And take our pen and just our pencil, whatever you're using, and make a little mark. And again, cut that nice and slow. And a tip, when you're cutting these, if you're cutting small pieces like this one, if you hold on to the shorter piece as you're cutting, that'll help also keep it from cracking on you. And I didn't cut that very straight at all. <clears throat> and that's perfectly fine also. These absolutely do not have to be perfect. And there we go. And you see, I don't know if you can see that. it's They're loose. And that's fine. We just want a basic hold. And then we're going to start again. We'll do one more row here on camera, and I'll do the rest off camera to save video time. So this time the separator piece is right here, and so this one will fit just fine right there. You just don't want them all going in the exact same line. You want that separation of the um, pieces, which I'll kind of so hopefully you can see what I mean like there's a piece separation here here 
here, there's going to be one about here, once I get the ends cut off. They don't have to be a perfect sand. You just want to get any splinters off, pretty much. Okay, so this one will go here. Just going to do a little dry fitting. Yes, and that works. Get a little glue. And mind you, I'm not using, like I said, much glue. I'm doing pretty much one strip right down the middle. Because we don't want it to, to squirt out on the sides. Because when we go to stain it, if there's hot glue sticking out anywhere, the stain won't stick to it. But if you do get some coming out somewhere, you can easily just get a piece of tweezers and pull it off. Or your fingernail. Whatever works. Okay, I'm going to use another little piece, but I got to cut it. Besides, this is the one I cut crooked. And that is not quite long enough, so I'm going to save that and then cut a new one. It was almost long enough, but once I cut the end off, it would not have fit. Okay, got that lined up, put a little line and cut. another little piece I save all of the pieces I don't save the teeny tiny pieces but I do save those size because when you're doing miniature you can absolutely use them okay so we'll fit this one in Perfect. All right, we'll just slide that one in into place. And so there we go. You can see what I'm doing here. This one I got to cut off still, but um, we have those down. Now, when you're doing these floors, you could have done them this way if you wanted to. I think they look better going long way because this is the back of the floor that will hit the wall. And these are the two sides here. So, I did mine this way. You can do yours any way you choose. You could do designs into this if you wanted to. Um, you could make squares, whatever. It's your floor. You can design it any way you want. I'm just showing you how I do a basic wood floor. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these off camera. I will come back when I come up here just to show you how I fit it in on the angle here. So I will see you in a few minutes. All right, popping back in to show you how I do these corners here. So what I did is I took a stick, a regular stick, cut off one end. And I'm going to try to move this part so you can see this edge. So we are here. And I'm going to this end because this one already has a long piece over here. Whereas this one has two short ones with the seam here. So I'm going to put this up like this. Line it up, leaving some overhang. Then I'm going to lift that up while I hold that into place. And then I'm going to flip it over take my pen or whatever you're using and just trace that onto the stick and then cut the stick where that line is that I just drew doesn't have to be perfect you just want to go slow so you can get it to not 
completely crack and split on you. Okay, mine did a little bit. Let's see what we got here. But I think it'll be fine. Anyway, I'm just going to stick it on here. Maybe move it down a hair bit. Yeah. Next. And if it does split too much like that, just move it down. And then glue it in. And you can always trim up the ends that are hanging, if anything's hanging over. So let me get some glue. And then I'm gonna pull it down enough to where that frail side isn't showing. And then I'm just gonna hold it down. And then if I need to, which I do on this one, I'm going to turn it over so I can try to keep it in frame for you. Yes. And then I'm just going to push it down so it doesn't go anywhere and just use my utility knife here to cut that piece off. Take five or six swipes of it. And then that should snap right off. It did, and you can just take some sandpaper if needed and just smooth that edge up a little bit. And there we go. And that's how I do these corners. So, here I'm gonna go up, butt it up here. Hold it, flip it over, draw that line there so I know where to cut it. Cut it nice and slow so I don't get those splits. I try not to get them anyway. corner there so I don't stab myself with it. But that up there, almost a perfect fit. We can cut some more down on this before we glue it or cut it off with the utility knife. I'm just going to try to trim it up here with the scissors to get a good fit. There we go, almost perfect. Just gonna glue it in, butt it up to that last one there. Down. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing, or keep it going up here, and then I'll come back and we will get this floor stained. All right, now it is time to stain. So, so you see some of these are loose a little bit and that's fine because once these are stained then we'll put a layer of Mod Podge over them and they'll all be down nice and secure. If you see like right down here there's a little black of the bottom floor showing a little bit right there all that's fine because there will be something around here for a baseboard like substance and let me just Sorry, I just noticed that I don't like the way this is hanging over. So let me just cut this off without cutting my wire for my lights. Cutting them lengthwise is a little bit easier than going acrosswise because usually they just snap right off for the most part there we go and I'm 
me just run a little sandpaper there so I don't end up with some splinters. There we go. And just make sure the lights still work and I didn't slice them. And they do. So we're good there. All right. So what I do, you can use stain. I'm inside and I have my window open, but it's still not very uh, ventilated, just, just the window open. So I'm going to make a stain using some acrylic paint and some water. You can use any color stain you want. If you wanted to do like a blue or a gray uh, washed floor, then you would use that color um, paint. I want a, like a wood stained floor, so I'm going to use a brown. And I had an espresso here, and I thought about using burnt umber, but they're a little dark. So I'm going to use this brown from the Dollar Tree. It says it's premium acrylic paint. I'm pretty sure it's watered already, but we're going to try it out. And then just add some water to it to thin it down. Not a ton. And I'm just going to use this little piece of stick that we cut off for the... It's not working the best. So let me just get the brush. Use it again, just one of these sponge daubers that you can get a pack of quite a few from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to sample it on a piece of scrap. Yeah, that's still need a little bit more water. And you just do it until you get it to the the consistency and look that you like or you could just use regular wood stain but because I don't really want to have my whole craft room smelling like stain I'm gonna use the watered-down version of the acrylic paint almost to where I want it. I'm going to add just a hair bit more water. And like I said, you just do it until you get the consistency or a stain-like color that you like. And you could just paint these if you wanted to. It's your project. You do it any way you want. Alright, I'm going to go with what I have here. And I'm just going to start anywhere making sure I get those metals or the edge the edges and it does not take much to do these at all I can get those little areas where they pieces join together and if it ends up the color you use gets a little darker than you wanted it you can always wipe it on and then take a baby wipe and wipe some off I'm actually liking this color that it, this came out. Kind of looks in person like a, almost like a chestnut stain. It's got little tints of like redwood in it, but still with the brown tone that I was looking for. Now I'm just going and making sure I get into those creases with my stain. And I'm just going to go over the whole thing again, 
just the brush to make sure I have everything nicely evened out. Okay. Now I want to hold it up and look to make sure I have all my little pieces. All right, I'm going to put this under the fan and let it dry, and then we'll see if we need a second coat for that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on my little stain, and I can save it for another project. Just an FYI, I save these little, um, they're beneficial. Ooh, I just spilled paint. Well, that wasn't a very airtight container. Anyway, sorry. I save these um, containers from the dog food. Just lesson learned, don't put them upside down or sideways. Grab a couple wipes to get my huge mess up. here and put this under the fan and then we will work on our tile piece. Alright. Let's move this out of the way so I don't have another disaster of a mess. again I've already painted black underneath and I just used the apple barrel black paint for this one too so what I'm using for the tiles is egg trays and I cut this part I cut the top of it so I'm using this part here and I cut from like some of these sides here and this, these pieces and I'll save this one for a different project and I just cut them into little squares and I didn't measure these so to speak I cut one they're not perfect and then I just use them to get an idea on the rest of them and they are about an inch all the way around, you know, like a one inch square. And then with these, we're going to just do the same thing as we did with the wood. We're just going to lay these down. So I'm going to start in the middle and I'm hot gluing these as well. And I'm making sure when I do these that there I'm putting the the more texture side oops hang on I need a glue stick then I'm putting the more texture side facing up yeah. and I will show you exactly what I mean now on these if you notice I am leaving a small little gap between these. Okay, and when I say the textured side, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but this side has a more of a texture, whereas this side doesn't. And I'm using the rougher side to face up for my tiles. And you can do tiles out of any 
anything really. You can use the egg trays, you can use um, the carry out cup holders that kind of have the same thing, um, pea pots. What else? You can use regular cardboard if you want a smooth tile. There's just so many different things you can use. Corrugated cardboard would make a nice thick um, tile. You could take paper plates even and cut those up or styrofoam pieces. Just pretty much whatever you want to make your, your tiles out of. Woodwork. And again, you want to make sure that you get those, try to get those glue pieces up. And again, these do not have to be perfect. So you got to remember, these are fairies building these. These are not architects and skilled construction workers. And... I am neither of those, so it just is what it is. And you notice these are not perfect um, squares at all. Some are a little smaller than the next, and then when we get to the ends, we'll be cutting. So then let me finish this row up, and then we'll do another row so I can show you how I do them, you can do them any way you want. You don't have to leave gaps between your tiles if you don't want them. I do it because I like the look of like a grout in between. And I may lighten that up as I go, but I like to start with the black on the bottom because it gives it a good uh, base, base color. So I'm just gonna keep putting these right there more in here and then I can show you how I do mine. I did a kitchen floor in another house I did. It was a house for some frogs and I call it the frog house which if I can located it. it's probably in the basement somewhere because that's where I put a lot of my builds until I'm ready to do something with them give them away sell them whatever but if I can locate it I will show it to you and you can see what I mean I did a black and white tiled floor in that kitchen for that house and all I did on that one was the same thing I'm doing here but I just used some chipboard cereal box when I did those because they were smooth and I just painted them before I stuck them down and then put them in as in the uh, checkerboard pattern which I thought looked pretty cool so at this point now we got one line you can do different things. You can line your tiles up to be the same or you can stagger like so. I'm gonna stagger my tiles because I just like the way it looks for this particular project but you know play around with it and see what you like because it's your project. So again leaving that gap there between these two also but let me just give you an idea if by setting these down so if I'm gonna stagger these which I am I would just 
put them so this is what it would look like going across some of them may end up being close to the same like so and that's my preference for this particular project and if you wanted them to be the same or close to it you could just do them like that either way would look good I'm just looking for more of a I don't know I guess a a rustic not even so much a rustic more of a I don't know I don't even know the word for it but that's this is the look I'm going for so we will just call it that's the look I'm going for staggered tiles so I just want to mention something else too that I just thought about so if you're doing floors let's say you wanted to make a really worn out floor and um, whatever what you could do is then take something like say the tip of your utility knife and I'm not going to do it on a tile I'm using but and say this is a piece of tile here that you wanted to use you could always take this and press down into that or even cut a little bit into it to make it look like a crack in the tile and then when you're painting it you would just emphasize put a little black paint underneath it or dark brown and that would look like a, like a crack in the tile or with the wood for example if you wanted to make it look like an old beat up floor then you would take something like the pokey tool and you would just kind of beat up on it so to speak put some scratches in it um, going whichever way you want let me just put a few and you can and I'll put a little stain on it just to show you what I mean so you would just kind of beat up on it I didn't do a great job of that beating up but you can kind of see like right there where it's got a little chippy up part and then or take a hammer even and and hammer some into it just beat it up and then stain it and then your stain is going to get darker in the areas that you beat up which will make your floor look more old and um, used that's what we'll call it old and used so I'm going to keep putting my tile pieces down as I'm going to call them leaving those gaps there in between these make really good bricks too and stones and everything else but you'll get to see more of that as we go along I'm gonna make a stone fireplace for this floor I believe or maybe on the wood floor I don't know we'll see as we go I'm so indecisive when it comes to building stuff I kind of make my decisions as I go um, I have an idea in my mind and then I just add as I go so I'm gonna continue putting all these on doing the same thing up here as I did on the other one just cutting them to fit same with the edges and then I'll come back and we'll move on to the next step so the floors are all dry now so what I'm gonna do is I want to make a almost like a terracotta color for this floor for these tiles I'm gonna trim them right now yeah, flip it over should have probably did this before I turned the camera on but I didn't and all I'm doing is just going along the back and trimming the tiles so they fit well against the wall and I waited till this was dry because these weren't attached very well just with the little dot of the hot glue good enough all right so I'm going to get a little cup here I just save these little um, 
high end ice cups. Pretty much save whatever I can just to mix up paint in. So I'm going to go ahead and pour some of this in. And this is it's called Pumpkin Orange from Apple Barrel and it's a, called an Outdoor Indoor Gloss. And I don't know if it'll be glossy like a tile or not, but we'll find out. I'm going to add some of the Apple Barrel Brown to it. Not a ton. And we're going to start with that. So let me stir that up and see what color that comes out to be. That's actually going to be pretty nice. I'm going to add a little bit more brown. And I'm just doing it a little bit at a time until I get the color that I want. Not sure. I'm going to add a little bit more brown. I may and add a little drop or two of red also just to get it with a little more with a little bit of a red in it although that color is looking nice now let me stir it up there a little bit better and I actually kind of like this color like this so I I'm going to just go ahead and add a drop or two of red just to see what we get. Okay. Ooh, got a little more than a drop or two. start with this again just using one of these sponge daubers from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna kind of go over each one individual first because I don't want to cover the black part of the um, floor completely a little bit is fine because we are going to mute it down some, but we do still want some of that, that black to show through. Some of these tiles are not down all the way, and I'm hoping that yeah, we can go ahead and see, just kind of brush over them, dab in the middle there so you're covering it but you're not if that makes sense you're getting it, some coverage but you're not complete coverage so that's what I'm doing I'm going to go ahead and cover all of these and come back and then while this dries we will put our um, blue layer on the wood floor all right so I have this one painted Already, I might need a second coat. I'm not going to know for sure until it dries. So I am going to set this one out of the way while we work on the wood floor. All right, this one is all dry now. And now this part here, if you notice, there's a little bit sticking out here 
and some little bit on the ends and that's fine because you won't see those when we're finished. All right, so I'm going to use, I think, the glue and water mixture. Um, it's just a white glue mixture. I already have some made up here. I'm gonna add a little bit more water to it. And this is just the white school glue, Elmer's glue. Um, mine's a generic Amazon glue, but it's the same thing. It's a white school glue and I just add some water to it. I had some water in it already, but it had thickened up a little bit sitting. So I'm just gonna stir that up. You want it to be like a cheap lotion consistency. For me, that's what I like to do. And I'm going to just use a, I don't know if I want to use a sponge. I'm out of my Dollar Tree sponges. I just used the last one in that uh, tile, the paint for the tile. So I guess I'm going to try to use this. This came from Dollar Tree also. I just want to get this all covered in this white glue. And this is going to reinforce these boards down as well as give it a nice protective coating. coating. And this will go on white, but it will dry completely clear. So I'm just gonna run it on. I wanna put it on a little bit thick. I don't wanna put it on completely like thin because I want it to go down into those slats of the boards. And then and I do want to, if I dab it or whatever I want to keep it all going the same way when I'm finished so I don't have any funky streak lines or bubbles from daubing but to get it all on you just need to get it on and then you can go back over and smooth it out just want to make sure you get here on those on the edges and on the areas where the the boards stick together or come together where they join I just want to make sure you get in there and get those because you want that glue to get down and give it a good a good stick a good hold And the ends are very important because you don't want those coming up. Okay, then I'm just going to smooth it all out, making sure I have all of those areas covered where the boards are joined. Make sure I have coverage on everything. not going to take long to dry this or the paint so I will put, pause the video and come back when these are dry. I'm going to put the fan on them so it won't take long at all. Alright so the one I put the glue uh, and water mixture on is now completely dry and everything is sealed down nicely on this so I'm gonna set this one to the side because I'm done with it for right now a little bit of glue right here still but that'll dry here shortly um, but all in all it looks pretty good 
Um, I'm not aging this floor or anything, so we're just going to leave it as is. I think it looks great. All right, so I'm going to set this one aside and bring out the one with the tile. So this one, if you can see, needs definitely needs another coat. So I'm going to go ahead and put another coat on this one. And then when it dries, come back and show you how I just kind of highlight these areas. And then we'll put our glue mixture on this one. Again, I'm not aging this floor either too much. I'm going to do a little bit of aging on it just because um, it's tile and that's what I want it to look like. So for right now, I'm going to set this one or I'm going to paint it off camera. Again, just put another coat on it just like I did the first time. And then... Um, come back and I'm going to show you how I'm going to install these floors and how I'm going to put uh, to secure them in. So I'll be back in just a few minutes and we'll get ready for that step. All right, so I have the tree house back in view. So what I want to do here is I put the floor in with the um, wood that's going to be the second floor and I've kind of put it where I want it to be and it's not in there at all very very well and I'm gonna just make some marks with my pen of where the floor is I have to turn it so I can see what I'm doing and I'm just gonna make a mark if I can there Let's see if it's marked yeah it marked and I'm just gonna make it on each side and I'm doing this because I'm going to put a stabilizer on this floor. So I'm going to pull that out. It is nice and snug in here. There we go. I don't know if you can hear my dogs in the background. I have the door closed to the room I'm in, but... They can be quite loud. So what I want to do is I'm thinking if I lay this down long ways, it might be easier to show you how I'm doing this. Um, hang on a sec. Let me just move my wet tiles out of the way so they can dry. One sec. Okay, and see if I can get this to lay out. I'm gonna need that. So I'm moving some stuff. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Maybe. Oh no. Okay, let me pause this camera and get it to an angle so you can see what I'm doing. Alright, I know this is a weird angle, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Um, this down here is the bottom, the floor, bottom floor. And then the mark I made was right here, and there's one on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these bamboo, bamboo skewers. These are the larger ones. Um, I believe I got these at Walmart. I could be wrong. I'm not sure. If, I think Dollar Tree carries the bigger, longer ones too during the summer. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do with them is I'm gonna put them into the side of the house on each side. And I'm not sure. I think I'll put two. Yeah, one there and one there. And to do that, I'm going to take my little pokey tool, my awl, here, and then I'm going to find my line, and I'm going to put one here, and I'm just going to poke a tool up, uh, poke a tool, poke a hole right there in the side of the treehouse, so I have something to anchor it to and glue it. And it doesn't have to be super thick. 
are super thick. Super, oh, I cannot talk, deep. So I put it in about an inch. And then I'm going to make another hole directly on the other side of my line. And I'm going to do the same thing. There we go. Okay, so I have those two holes and I'm going to put two more over on this side in just a moment. So what I'm going to do is take my stick, my skewer, and I'm going to stick it in here. About right there. And then make a mark on the stick about where I think it's going to fit. So about right here. Pull it out. And then I'm going to cut that stick where I marked it. I have some yeah, these scissors aren't going to do it and I don't know where my cutter tool is offhand so I will just cut it or, or break it and then cut it trim it down it doesn't have to be sanded or anything because it's going into the, the tree literally so I'm going to put one end in that hole and then I'm going to make the other hole, and then this one will fit in that hole. And then I'll glue those in, and then my floor will sit on these and give them a little stability. I can stain these, and they'll look like wood beams, is what the goal is. So I'm going to go ahead and put the other two holes in, like I just showed you on that side. And um, work these in, glue them in. I'm going to glue them in with some tacky glue. I use the Aileen's, Aileen's Tacky Glue. I will show it to you once I pull it down. So I'm going to go ahead and try to work this in and come back and show you what it looks like. All right, so let's just keep moving on with this berry house, tree house here of ours. So um, this is the two pieces of bamboo, bamboo skewer I put in. And that one is for this floor here, which is the wood floor. And I'm hoping you can see very well. I got a new holder for this phone, so we'll see how that works. So what I'm going to do is take some wood glue, which I don't have. Let me grab it. I am using this super glue wood glue here and this is from Dollar Tree. I absolutely love this stuff. And what I'm going to do is just go, well I don't think this one's even open. Hang on, let me cut that top off. Here we go. And I'm just going to run a bead of glue. Try not to make a mess. And I'm just going to run this down each one of these skewers. Trying not to make a huge mess. Then I'm just going to take this piece. Get it in there. Just got to kind of maneuver it in because it is a tight fit there. Anyway, get it into fit. Then I'm going to set something on there to hold that down. Just until the, the glue sticks. So I'm going to look underneath and make sure we have a connection. There we go. All right, so let that sit, and while that's sitting, I'm going to go ahead and put, well, not put the other floor on yet because I have to still finish it. So while that one's sitting in there drying, we're going to go to the next one. So let me move this camera angle, 
here. All right, this is the bottom of the tile floor. Sorry about the movement. All right, so I didn't paint the bottom of these. There's really no need to. No one's going to see them. So here is the tile as it is all dry. So what I want to do now is I want to take a paintbrush. Just a, let me see. All right, just a basic, this one will work, paintbrush, about like this. And then I'm going to use some of this black acrylic paint. This is from Dollar Tree, and it works just fine for this project. So I'm going to squirt some in my cup. I think I'm going to water it down a bit. Not much, just adding some in there. Stir it up. Okay, and then I'm just going to take it and I'm going to go in between. All of these tiles. Doesn't have to be perfect whatsoever because because I will show you here in just a second. I'm just getting a baby wipe here. And I'm just going to kind of go across it all. It's going to end up with a wash over the whole thing. But we're just going to go ahead and work on this in the middle here first. And this is just going to give it the look of grout without having to use grout since we just used those cardboard pieces. So all I'm doing is just going down and filling in between these. Like you can see, there's, they're nowhere near perfect. And then once I get, you know, a few done, I'm just going to take that baby wipe again. And just, I'm literally, I know it looks like, ew, what are you doing? But you'll see when it's all said and done. So we're just going to give that a nice wipe over just kind of getting that all in there all right so i'm going to go ahead and do the rest of it off camera and then let it dry and come back and we will finish this to make it look again like the terracotta tile So the floors are all dry now. So what I'm going to do is I want to make a almost like a terracotta color for this floor for these tiles. I'm going to trim them right now. Yeah, that flip it over. I should have probably did this before I turned the camera on, but I didn't. And all I'm doing is just going along the back and trimming the tiles so they fit well against the wall. 
and I waited till this was dry because these weren't attached very well just with the little dot of the hot glue. good enough. Alright, so I'm going to get a little cup here. I just save these little um, tie-in ice cups. Pretty much save whatever I can just to mix up paint in. So I'm going to go ahead and pour some of this in. And this is called pumpkin orange from apple barrel and it's a, called an outdoor indoor gloss and I don't know if it'll be glossy like a tile or not but we'll find out I'm going to add some of the apple barrel brown to it not a ton and we're gonna start with that so let me stir that up and see what color that comes out to be actually going to be pretty nice. I'm going to add a little bit more brown. And I'm just doing it a little bit at a time until I get the color that I want. Not sure. I'm going to add a little bit more brown. I may add add a little drop or two of red also just to get it with a little more with a little bit of a red in it although that color is looking nice now let me stir it up there a little bit better and I actually kind of like this color like this so I I'm going to just go ahead and add a drop or two of red just to see what we get. Okay. Oop, got a little more than a drop or two. start with this. Again, just using one of these sponge daubers from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to kind of go over each one individual first because I don't want to cover the black part of the um, floor completely. A little bit is fine. because we are going to mute it down some, but we do still want some of that, that black to show through. Some of these tiles are um, not down all the way, and I'm hoping that, yeah, we can go ahead and see, just kind of brush over them, dab in the middle there. So you're covering it, but you're not, if that makes sense. You're getting it, some coverage, but you're not complete coverage. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and cover all of these and come back. And then while this dries, we will put our um, blue layer on the wood floor. All right, so I have this one painted 
already I might need a second coat. I'm not going to know for sure until it dries. So I am going to set this one out of the way while we work on the wood floor. All right, this one is all dry now. And now this part here, if you notice, there's a little bit sticking out here and some little bit on the ends, and that's fine because you won't see those when we're finished. All right, so I'm going to use, I think, the glue and water mixture. Um, it's just a white glue mixture. I already have some made up here. I'm going to add a little bit more water to it. And this is just the white school glue, Elmer's glue. Um, mine's a generic Amazon glue, but it's the same thing. It's a white school glue, and I just add some water to it. I had some water in it already, but it had thickened up a little bit sitting. So I'm just going to stir that up. You want it to be like a cheap lotion consistency. For me, that's what I like to do. And I'm going to just use a, I don't know if I want to use a sponge. I'm out of my Dollar Tree sponges. I just used the last one in that uh, tile, the paint for the tile. So I guess I'm going to try to use this. This came from Dollar Tree also. I just want to get this all covered in this white glue. And this is going to reinforce these boards down as well as give it a nice protective coating. coating. And this will go on white, but it will dry completely clear. So I'm just going to run it on. I want to put it on a little bit thick. I don't want to put it on completely like thin because I want it to go down into those slats of the boards. And then and I do want to, if I dab it or whatever, I want to keep it all going the same way when I'm finished so I don't have any funky streak lines or bubbles from dabbing but to get it all on you just need to get it on and then you can go back over and smooth it out just want to make sure you get here on those on the edges and on the areas where the the boards stick together or come together where they join. I just want to make sure you get in there and get those because you want that glue to get down and give it a good a good stick, a good hold. And the ends are very important because you don't want those coming up. And I'm just going to smooth it all out, making sure I have all of those areas covered where the boards are joined. Make sure I have coverage on everything. not going to take long to dry this or the paint so I will put 
pause the video and come back when these are dry. I'm going to put the fan on them so it won't take long at all. All right, so the one I put the glue uh, and water mixture on is now completely dry and everything is sealed down nicely on this. So I'm going to set this one to the side because I'm done with it for right now. A little bit of glue right here still, but that'll dry here shortly. Um, but all in all, it looks pretty good. Um, I'm not aging this floor or anything, so we're just going to leave it as is. I think it looks great. All right, so I'm going to set this one aside and bring out the one with the tile. So this one, if you can see, needs definitely needs another coat. So I'm going to go ahead and put another coat on this one. And then when it dries, come back and show you how I just kind of highlight these areas. And then we'll put our glue mixture on this one. Again, I'm not aging this floor either too much. I'm going to do a little bit of aging on it just because um, it's tile and that's what I want it to look like. So for right now, I'm going to set this one or I'm going to paint it off camera. Again, just put another coat on it just like I did the first time and then um, come back and I'm going to show you how I'm going to install these floors and how I'm going to put uh, to secure them in. So I'll be back in just a few minutes and we'll get ready for that step. All right, so I have the tree house back in view. So what I want to do here is I put the floor in with the um, wood. That's going to be the second floor. And I've kind of put it where I want it to be and it's not in there at all very, very well. And I'm going to just make some marks with my pen of where the floor is. I have to turn it so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to make a mark if I can there. Let's see if it's marked. Yeah, it marked. And I'm just going to make it on each side. And I'm doing this because I'm going to put a stabilizer on this floor. So I'm going to pull that out. It is nice and snug in here. There we go. I don't know if you can hear my dogs in the background. I have the door closed to the room I'm in, but they can be quite loud. So what I want to do is I'm thinking if I lay this down long ways, it might be easier to show you how I'm doing this. Um, hang on a sec. Let me just move my wet tiles out of the way so they can dry. One second. Okay. And see if I can get this to lay out. I'm going to need the mats. So I'm moving some stuff. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Maybe. Oh no. Okay, let me pause this camera and get it to an angle so you can see what I'm doing. Alright, I know this is a weird angle, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Um, this down here is the bottom, the floor, bottom floor. And then the mark I made was right here, and there's one on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these bamboo, bamboo skewers. These are the larger ones. Um, I believe I got these at Walmart. I could be wrong. I'm not sure if, I think Dollar Tree carries the bigger, longer ones too during the summer. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do with them is I'm gonna put them into the side of the house on each side. And I'm not sure, I think I'll put two. Yeah, one there and one there. And to do that, 
I'm going to take my little pokey tool, my awl, here, and then I'm going to find my line, and I'm going to put one here, and I'm just going to poke a tool, uh, poke a tool, poke a hole right there in the side of the treehouse, so I have something to anchor it to and glue it, and it doesn't have to be super thick, or super thick, super I cannot talk deep. I put it in about an inch and then I'm going to make another hole directly on the other side of my line and I'm going to do the same thing. There we go. Okay, so I have those two holes and I'm going to put two more over on this side. In just a moment so what I'm gonna do is take my stick my skewer and I'm gonna stick it in here about right there and then make a mark on the stick about where I think it's gonna fit so about right here pull it out and then I'm gonna cut that stick where I marked it. I have some yeah, these scissors aren't going to do it. And I don't know where my cutter tool is offhand. So I will just cut it or, or break it and then cut it, trim it down. It doesn't have to be sanded or anything because it's going into the, the tree, literally. So I'm going to put one end in that hole, and then I'm going to make the other hole, and then this one will fit in that hole. And then I'll glue those in, and then my floor will sit on these and give them a little stability. I can stain these, and they'll look like wood beams, is what the goal is. So I'm going to go ahead and put the other two holes in, like I just showed you on that side, and... Uh, work these in, glue them in. I'm going to glue them in with some tacky glue. I use the Aileen's, Aileen's tacky glue. I will show it to you once I pull it down. So I'm going to go ahead and try to work this in and come back and show you what it looks like. All right, so let's just keep moving on with this berry house, tree house here of ours. So um, this is the two pieces of bamboo, bamboo skewer I put in and that one is for this floor here which is the wood floor and I'm hoping you can see very well I got a new holder for this phone so we'll see how that works so what I'm gonna do is take some wood glue which I don't have let me grab it And I am using this super glue wood glue here and this is from Dollar Tree I absolutely love this stuff and what I'm gonna do is just go well, I don't think this one's even open hang on let me cut that top off there we go. and I'm just gonna run a bead of glue Try not to make a mess. And I'm just going to run this down each one of these skewers. Trying not to make a huge mess. Then I'm just going to take this piece. Get it in there. Just gotta kind of maneuver it in because it is a tight fit there. Anyway, get it into fit. Then I'm gonna set something on there to hold that down just until the 
the glue sticks. So I'm going to look underneath and make sure we have a connection. There we go. All right, so let that sit. And while that's sitting, I'm going to go ahead and put, well, not put the other floor on yet because I have to still finish it. So while that one's sitting in there drying, we're going to go to the next one. So let me move this camera angle here. All right, this is the bottom of the tile floor. Sorry about the movement. All right, so I didn't paint the bottom of these. There's really no need to. No one's going to see them. So here is the tile as it is all dry. So what I want to do now is I want to take a paintbrush. Just a... Let me see. All right, just a basic, this one will work, paintbrush, about like this. And then I'm going to use some of this black acrylic paint. This is from Dollar Tree, and it works just fine for this project. I'm going to squirt some in my cup. I think I'm going to water it down a bit. Not much, just adding some in there. Stir it up. Okay, and then I'm just going to take it and I'm going to go in between. All of these tiles doesn't have to be perfect whatsoever because because I will show you here in just a second I'm just getting a baby wipe here and I'm just going to kind of go across it all. It's going to end up with a wash over the whole thing. But we're just going to go ahead and work on this in the middle here first. And this is just going to give it the look of grout without having to use grout since we just used those cardboard pieces. So all I'm doing is just going down and filling in between these. Like you can see, there's, they're nowhere near perfect. And then once I get, you know, a few done, I'm just going to take that baby wipe again. And just, I'm literally, I know it looks like, ew, what are you doing? But you'll see when it's all said and done. So we're just going to give that a nice wipe over just kind of getting that all in there all right so I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of it off camera and then let it dry and come back and we will finish this to make it look again like the terracotta tile Alright, so you have to excuse me, I'm catching a cold here. 
Here's our tiles again. I did go over it already with one um, layer of paint. And what I did is I'm just using one of these little chippy brushes. And I got my paint in a cup. And all I'm going to do is put some paint in here, kind of wipe it. And then I'm going to go back over it for a, another layer. Because it was still a little bit too dark for my liking. I mean, and depending on the type of build you're making or what you're building, it might have been okay like that if you're looking for more of the the aged tiles. Me, I was just kind of looking for regular terracotta tile. And I wanted some of the black to, to show through. Not a ton of it. I didn't want any defined lines. I just wanted it to have a little bit of definition. You know, just got to keep in mind these are little fairies that are building these this house, and they are not going to. Let me move this so I don't get paint there on my floor. Um, they're not contractors. They're not going to have the perfect shaped flooring. I almost thought about putting carpet in this room. But I went ahead and did the tiles so I could just kind of show you three different ways of making floors. And you can make floors any way you want. I mean, these are just some of my ways and some of my ideas. Like I said, it's your house. Make it your own. There's so many things that you can use. Just stuff in the, that you would throw away or stuff laying around your house. And you'd be amazed. Which... As we go with the series, when I get to the decorating the parts of the house, you'll see what I mean when I say that you can just use pretty much anything. Right now, I'm just going through and softening up a little bit of the black. I don't want to cover it. I just want to soften some of it a bit. And that's it. All right, so there we go. That part is done. Well, let me add a little bit more over here. Because when it dries, some of that black is going to come through more. There we go. All right, so I'm going to let this dry. And I'm going to go ahead and end this video here before it gets too long. And get it uploaded. And then I will not take as long to get the next one up. I do apologize for that big wait in between. I just, life can get hectic. I work a full-time job and it's, sometimes it gets hectic. So anyway, I will try to have another, the next part of this series out by next week. And then I'm also going to have some regular crafting videos come out in between just to have a little more variety on the channel. All right, guys, until the next video, hope you have a great one and... See you in the next one.